Welcome to Clan Capital Raids. This is the war experience of the new Clan Capital feature in Clash of Clans. When the time is right, your clan can take part in raid weekends. The leader or co-leaders can opt your clan in. They do that by clicking the start raid button. The time remaining is clearly displayed and there is also a little bit of information from the ancient builder talking you through how this works. There is actually an attacking tutorial which i will go over here in a moment alongside the rewards which we will talk about at the end of the video so let's go ahead and start my clan's weekend raid they'll actually begin on a friday and end on a monday it is time for raiding in raid weekends you will go up against other clans capitals so you can see we have matched my good friend beaker's lab let's go let's take him down here you can see the enemy clan you are currently raiding to win your clan needs to wipe out all of their districts when you beat this capital you will be matched against another one everyone gets a number of attacks they can use but the first time you three star a district you will get a bonus so you can notice five attacks is what you will have by default and you can get a sixth by three starring a district Meanwhile, other clans will be attacking your clan capital. When the weekend finishes, you will earn raid medals based on your attacking and defending. Your clan can attack the districts however they wish, but all of them need to be three-starred before you unlock the capital peak. The raid weekend operates similar to the clan games in that even if a player joins the clan after the raid weekend has begun, they can still attack so long as they have not attacked in a different clan. As soon as you attack within a clan, you are locked into that clan for the raid weekend. I did explain clan capital attacking in a separate video, but obviously you need to know how this works in order to take part in the raid weekend. It lets you know that a spell has been left over from the previous attack. Spells last throughout your attack and into the next. It also introduces the deployment area, which will expand as we start taking out buildings. So let's get going for super barbarians. Oh, it actually wants me to deploy them all within that tiny little circle. They already on the tutorial but you can see the map dynamically expanding ground troops cannot walk around walls which are connected to water cliffs or the edge of the district that is why they are going through the wall to the cannon it's also why this area for example has not expanded in the deployment zone because ground troops do not have direct access to it so the jump spell can be used jump over walls rivers and coastal water and when we use it here not only only will the troops have access the deployment area it will expand as well so we can deploy the troops right into that location and with the attacks it might be that you're trying to take down key defenses or the next attacker or that you're actually just opening up pathing so they can directly target some of the defenses Oh, it's explaining the gate mechanics here. So essentially your troops see this as a regular wall, but the defending troops, if we take a look here, can just walk right through it. They just open the gate and through they go. Sometimes you might actually want to keep your troops locked in a certain area to try and distract the enemy. As I explained in one of the previous videos as well, the frost spell can freeze the water to allow your ground troops to walk over and since they have access that is then again where the deployment area expanded going back to the raid map you can see that a couple of my clan mates have already started attacking really nice addition that you actually have the swords chinking here by the airship but an interesting thing to note is that the friendly challenge is disabled during the raid weekend so that you can't copy layouts and work out how to attack your opponent. Now let's take a look at this. Golem Quarry has already been attacked. Let's see what I can do here. I'm actually going to go with... Well, I've already got the Flying Fortress cooked up and that's not a bad choice. So what I think I'm going to do is use two Flying Fortresses. I'm going to use the Rage just behind to get through this back area. There's not a lot of splash damage but I'm going to wait so that my rocket balloons don't get too far ahead. Now let's use the rage. Rocket balloons. 
and I think the minions, there's no splash. One of them comes down here, not, not the end of the world. Now, since the frost spell lasts the entire attack, I can use it now, or I can wait to see where it is most useful for the next attacker. Honestly, I think we're okay with this air defense. I believe we should try and freeze both of these. That will last for the remainder of my attack, and also that's going to be pretty critical moving into the next attack as well. I think we've taken out a good chunk of this base. We're getting close to the 50% two star and again i honestly think three to five attacks is around about the average that it will take you to destroy a district i didn't even realize we had two flying fortresses in this area wow they are doing work look at the air defense though really doing a number on us it would be good to get that down skeletons oh they're stuck just on the other side of that wall but the air defense goes down honestly I think I should just go back into this base again because we've got nice pathing for the Flying Fortress being defense targeting. And then that means I get my bonus attack, which like I said, you always want to coordinate and make sure that everybody within your clan is getting that sixth attack. So yes, whilst you can change into other districts, you can just go right back in and attack the same one yourself. So let's try and take that blast bow down first. Get the rocket balloons in and i think we just bring everything into this area why don't we use the frost spell here and i think if we use the rage here as well we should be able to flush this area down quick enough that the flying fortresses will have more than enough for the back end of the base come on rocket balloon it would be good if you could get some good damage here as well oh it didn't quite get it but the flying fortresses other than the rapid rockets in the air defense they should be good here there's no single target infernos i need to worry about so this is getting taken down in just three attacks. And that is where coordinating with your clan is huge. The first attacker taking down that initial chunk of the base was massive for me because I could then swoop in and get the victory. Oh, they're starting to take a bit of damage from that air defense, but it's better than finishing on the blast ball. I know that for sure. Look at the skeletons cleaning up as well behind. Absolutely beautiful job. Come on, take it down. Let's go. We got mass skeletons now onto that hit fence. And there we go. The three stars. So Golem Quarry is taken out and I myself have earned my bonus attack. You can see my clan mates again continuing to attack the other districts. Barbarian camp. We take a look at the details. Two attacks. And it's easily going to be taken down in the third, I would assume. But I do not want to take that down because I have already got my bonus attack. What makes sense is for me to attack one of the districts that is early on in the process. And I am not likely to three star it because I'd like one of my clan mates to do that for the bonus attack. Once all of the districts have been destroyed, the capital peak is unlocked. Whilst this is the main base, the strategy is the same. Coordinate as a clan, gradually take it down, and I had my clan mates take out the tough parts of this base. Here we go. We are in to finish off the Capital Peak. This is actually one of my favorite strategies, using the sneaky archers to just pick off the defenses. Why don't we try and take down the raid cart over there as well? You do have to be careful somewhat on time, and I think I will use a rage spell and probably the frost spell here as well. We might as well use them early since they are always present in the attack if we can get that blast ball down with the archers that would be nice to take out since i destroyed the cannon cart hut notice that the cannon cart is now set free so let's get a barbarian on that come on oh it missed it we're going to need the archers let's focus here we don't want to run out of time by trying to explain this log trap lots of traps at the top there let's bring in some of the barbarians and we can hopefully get that cannon down as well once the giant cannon goes down that's a lot of splash defense gone and there we have it, my friends. If you can save onto any of your troops at the end of an attack, though, you will get a bonus in capital gold, just in case you're the unfortunate clan member who has to finish off 1% of a base. But the capital peak has fallen we get our congratulations screen the total amount of capital gold that we looted and you see it right there 
next raid. Knights of Zion. Klaus, I'm coming for you, my friend. I still have three attacks left, but notice that my clan mates, or some of them, have actually used all of their attacks. It is just your five or six attacks collectively across the entire raid weekend. They do not reset in between each clan capital that you take down. Once collectively as a clan, you are getting down to your final couple of attacks. I would start honing in on set districts. The reason is the raid medals are based on the amount of districts that you take down. You can see in the top left, we are looting capital gold as we are taking down buildings. So it could be if you want more capital gold, you can spread out the attacks across different districts. But generally speaking, the raid medals, in my opinion, is what I would be going for. So try your best as a clan with those remaining attacks to take down as many districts as possible because more three stars equals more raid medals. Once the raid weekend finishes, you will be able to see how many raid medals you earned. And this is both from attacking and taking down districts as well as defending. Collectively, you can see these stats as a clan, capital gold, enemy districts destroyed. You have your leaderboard as to the most buildings destroyed and the overall summary as well. If you would like to know how you spend the raid medals and capital gold, my clan capital explained video is right here. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.